Walmart tax, but it's not just aimed at the retail giant. It is a bill aimed at helping low-wage workers here in Connecticut, but it has been labeled anti-business. Chief political correspondent Mark Davis joins us live now with all the details. Good evening, Mark. Hi, Keith and Ann. Good evening, everyone from the Hartford Newsroom. Yeah, this push at the Capitol is being fueled by stories from Connecticut residents, people who are barely getting by. I work at McDonald's, and I'm currently living out of my car because, it because I can't afford a place to live. State lawmakers heard that story and others today as they weigh bills to raise the minimum wage and the so-called Walmart bill. It's called the Walmart bill because it's aimed at that retail giant and others, like the major fast food chains, that pay low wages, resulting in many of their employees qualifying for state assistance, like food stamps and Medicaid. I work at Dunkin' Donuts. I've been here for eight years. Uh, last time I received a raise was uh, six years ago. Um, i trying to raise my three children on a minimum wage job. The proposal would impose a fee on Dunkin' Donuts, Walmart, and any company that employs low-wage workers as a way to compensate the state and state taxpayers for the medical coverage and other state services they qualify for. Walmart declined to comment on the bill, but the state's largest business organization did. This put a punitive tax on those employers of a dollar per hour, and if there's 500 hourly employees at 20 hours apiece, that's a $10,000 a week tax. The governor today seemed to be steering clear of the proposal that has been labeled very anti-business. I am obviously trying to attack that issue from a different angle, uh, which is to raise the minimum wage to $10.10 and .10 in a three-step uh, process. Now, the business community doesn't like Malloy's plan either. They believe there are enough rules and regulations, and that the less the legislature does, the better that that would help create jobs. Live from the Hartford Newsroom, Mark Davis, News 8.